Huh? Yep. Huh? Yeah, it's at the way. What's, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> there we go. G. I'm good, dude. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, so you have 52 minutes and counting, and I imagine Mike might be a little late, so I'm going to. I'm gonna just hand things over to you and uh, and take it away, man. Sounds, Sounds great. great. All, right, All right, so, so I, think I think the first question, question I have, have and uh, anyone, anyone in the class, class can go ahead and answer is, I, I really would like to get an understanding of where the class is. I know it's an MBA level class, but would love to have an understanding, you know, what the goals of the individuals in the class are right now when they're trying to get out of this class and how to achieve an MBA in the first place. Okay. So I can address that a little bit and then, like, hand it off to people. I'd say... You know, most of my MBA classes, G, have a mix of, uh, of like, mid, mid-career mid professionals. A lot of folks in here are in aerospace right now. Um, there's uh, some people that are just out of undergrad and, uh, you know, working in one or another job but may want to move to a different industry or at least a different job within that industry after uh, graduation. And then there's there's one-off, one-off, uh, uh, um situations that uh, that I can't generalize so um, why don't why don't we go around the room in uh, in Bakersfield first and just like answer that question briefly here uh, Valerie can we start with you AV oh yeah but I say Bakersfield yeah, yeah. AV I'm sorry I'm, I'm still in last week's like mode go um, so I'm a budget analyst I just graduated undergrad two years ago so I'm still like pretty new into the I hope to one day be a supervisor. Um, from this class, it'd be nice to learn tips about working on budgets. Can Can you hear okay, G? I'm having a bit of trouble on uh, raising the volume on my side. side. Uh, well, it, it's probably our side too, actually, because uh, the the microphone only goes so far on my my webcam. Valerie, can you talk loud when you say that again? <laughs> um, I just graduated undergrad a couple of years ago, so I'm still new to the work field. I'm hoping to gain tips on how to um, one day be a good supervisor as well as run a small business. Got it, got it. Okay. Ashley. Uh, and not, not, not everyone, not everyone has, to has to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only if you feel compelled, like, hey, I have a cool story, story about why I'm here. Okay. Not, not, not. Ashley, are you feeling good with your story without further clarification? So good. Okay. <laughs> Who else? Julia? I don't think I'm compelling. <laughs> okay. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller. All right. So uh, uh, I also work in government right now. I'm a contract specialist. Um, and uh, I got into the MBA program to basically help, well, to further my career goals um, and also to bridge the gap in between the time that I graduated my, my undergrad and uh, actually start working professionally again. Um, it was nice to keep the grant money coming in. Uh, but uh, I also have goals of uh, uh, owning and running uh, my own uh, family business. So. Got it, got it. <clears throat> Jake, Serena, want to clarify it all? Uh, I'm a cost schedule analyst for Northrop Grumman, uh, and I'm getting my MBA because uh, I want to be a vice president, and pretty much you can't become a vice president unless you have a Got it. Got it. Opens the key to the door that I need to go through. So, gee, let me let me like ask a brief question of oh, I've got like I've got two different classrooms. They're connected via like remote link, but you can only see the one here. So, Bakersfield, anybody want to clarify more for Garrett what uh, what what you what you'd like to get out of both his talk today and your MBA in general? I do work in the finance area, so I kind of feel, though, even though I will have my MBA, I think 
we do this here that I might have to get some further certification to be best for that. Um, nevertheless, I mean, you can just warn me about all the various topics and different fears that students can be interested in. So, you get and Ryan, what I'd like to learn about you is that uh, I noticed that although you have your undergraduate degree, you've chosen the route to go with certifications. Um, so I just wanted to get kind of your perspective on, you know, getting an MBA or some type of graduate degree versus just going the straight certification route. So that's kind of what I'm interested in talking about. Got it. Did you hear that, Garrett? I did. I did. Okay. Uh, quickly, before you answer, a, uh, Bakersfield, I think the only person that's missing is uh, uh, is Ashley, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Thanks. G, take it away. Got it. Got it. All right. All so, right. so, give you, give you uh, uh, back, back, my background. background. And I'm sure and I'm you're sure seeing, seeing my LinkedIn, LinkedIn account. account. Oh, it's All like, like, like I'm going to lower the speaker, speaker now. now. I'm getting I'm echo. Getting echo. Jeremy, are you hearing me okay? okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're good here. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, so for the majority of my career, career I've, been I've been a big, a big company, company person. person. Uh, uh, out, of out of college, college I, did, I really, really was planning to go, go back to law school. school. So that had been my career, career trajectory. trajectory. Uh, uh, I've been, been accepted to a graduate program at Stanford. In reviewing my finances and having basically paid for my education through loans, I decided it wasn't prudent to go back and get a master's at the time. So I went ahead and jumped into the job market. Even though I was a public policy major, a lot of the work I had done in my undergraduate career required me to be more technical. So I was coding, using Unix on a SunSpark station. Probably a lot of you weren't born when SunSpark stations were around. Uh, uh, but it was but a very, powerful, very powerful tool to do statistical, statistical analysis um, and uh, help me finish my research project. project. And then when and I got out to the job market, market uh, people, uh, were, people were like, oh, like, oh interesting. interesting. You have you all have these technical, technical skills, skills um, that, that, that we wouldn't we expect, expect you to have. To have. So, so had my first had my interview first at Apple. Apple. Uh, uh, it went it really went well. well. Uh, uh, but I'll, I'll tell, tell you a story about that a little bit later and answering, answering some of your some questions. Of your questions. But, but started, started at Apple. At Apple. I, was I was there for there about, about six months, six months when, when my, supervisor my supervisor had to go out on family leave. They literally, they literally looked around the room and said, hey, you, Burunda, you're the new supervisor. And that was the auspicious beginning of my management career. So, so from there, from there I, ended I ended up basically becoming, basically becoming a supervisor, supervisor lead, lead, holding, holding a number, number of positions at Apple, Apple, which basically had me direct quality assurance teams, teams. did some biz dev, dev work, work for them as them well, as well. Um, that I would get pulled into, into because, because you know, my, you know, my team, team was doing a great job. job. We were delivering product, product, very high quality product, and they needed someone who could split the line between technical and business. And because I didn't become from a technical background, that wasn't my primary focus. I was very comfortable in getting up in front of people and meeting with customers. Um, I went from Apple to Symantec. Uh, the reason that I made that transi transition was purely personal. Um, you know, you know, was dating, was dating someone. someone, they, they got, a got a great nursing job, job in, LA in LA and, and thought, thought she was the one, the one. Uh, uh, left uh, Apple, uh, uh, went, went down, down to, LA, to LA, and we broke, and we up, broke 10 up 10 days later. later. Uh, the truth uh, is, uh, um, had, I, had not I not left, left in, that in that situation, I probably would have stayed at Apple. I'd still be there right now. Great company. Loved it. Obviously, it's been very successful the last 20 years. Uh, wow. With that said, with that said uh, uh, you know, I think yeah, I did I think five or six years at Apple, years and I started, started my six years at Symantec, Symantec. Uh, uh, another, another great, great company, company to work to for. for. Uh, uh, whereas for, for Apple, Apple, I think the major, major learning, learning that I took that away, from away from it was innovation and, and focus. focus. So the whole so idea at Apple was... We're going to build, build the build best the products in the world, world period. period. Um, um, and we, we, will we, will we will spend the time necessary. We will invest the resources, the resources necessary, necessary, to necessary to build the best product. product. And, and there's, there's even, even a sense, sense of, of almost arrogance. arrogance. We don't we care don't if anyone buys it. it. We're going to We're continue going to, continue to build the best products in the world. And eventually the world will catch up with us. It was a great lesson in focus. Hey, do one, do one thing, thing really, really, really well. well. 
As I moved over to Symantec, uh, I really appreciated their focus as well. We had a guy by the name of John Thompson, who I think is chairman of the board for Microsoft right now. He had been the number three person at IBM, and he had been passed over for the CEO position at IBM. So he wanted to take over a smaller company. He took over Symantec. I think we're about $450 million in revenue. And by the time he left Symantec, we were $5 billion in revenue. His focus, His focus was, was crushed crush the competition. The competition. Um, um, that was, that was the, the only, only thing you had to do. Had to Again, do. you were given the resources, resources and opportunities necessary, necessary but, but we were expected, we were expected to, deliver to deliver 10% quarter, quarter over quarter, quarter revenue quarter returns, returns every single, every single quarter. quarter. And we did that. I think we did that for four or five years straight. It was a high pressure situation. If you didn't perform, you got moved out of the organization. At the same time, it's very professionally rewarding. I learned a lot and got a lot of exposure to different portions of the company. Again, I got to play his dev role as I moved up through the management positions. Eventually, Eventually became a director, became a director you know, had 100 uh, plus engineers, engineers working for me. me. I was, I was the, the worldwide quality, quality assurance champion. champion. So, so my job is basically to go out and evangelize, you know, best you practices, practices for quality assurance, make sure, sure people had the resources, resources they needed, needed. Uh, uh, was uh, able to build in a whole bunch of efficiencies by creating networks there. So whereas, you know, we had, I'd say 20-plus 20 20 divisions, divisions, and everyone, and everyone was reinventing the wheel for engineering process and quality assurance process. process. Um, um, I was able I was to reach out across all those divisions and basically you know, yeah, get a group get together to say, hey, let's hey, stop reinventing, reinventing the wheel. Let's all let's work, all together, work together, together, pull from some of the resources, and, and be more successful. More successful. Uh, uh, one thing one that kind of set the stage for later, that was the first time that I started Agile development. So back in the day, Microsoft had developed something called Extreme Programming. Um, there's some other ones, uh, Sashimi, uh, a couple of others. They were kind of the early Agile development process, or engineering process. Um, and eventually, you know, Scrum came along. Um, the whole uh, the Agile, whole Agile you know, tidal wave that really, really has permeated, has permeated most, most of technology, technology now. And is, you know, you know, I've gone to I've conferences, conferences where I have lawyers, lawyers and accountants who are, you know, Agile, Agile proponents because they really, really construction, construction, construction is huge in construction, construction as well. As well. Um, um, but the idea but the of kind of breaking, breaking down tasks, tasks into iterative cycles and improving them time over time. Let's see. Let's see. Left Symantec, uh, again, again, more of a more personal of a situation. situation. Uh, got to go uh, to Yahoo, uh, was uh, doing BizDev product, product owner type owner work there. there. Um, um, then, then my first then foray into startup, startup, I went to an went advertising, to advertising startup, startup called Spotrunner. Spot we thought it was going to be the next Google. Google. Turned out it Turned wasn't. Out it wasn't. Um, um, it was interesting. I think I started when we were there with 40 some odd employees. We grew to 390, and 18 months later, they were down to eight employees. Uh, I got lucky to land on my feet um, after the startup kind of went away. Uh, Technicolor, uh, love Technicolor. I was there for about nine months to a year again as a director of quality assurance when I started getting additional groups. Um, took over the development, product. Um, now, now, again, had again, a fairly, had a fairly large, large group spanning, spanning multiple, multiple divisions, divisions multiple, multiple continents. continents. Um, uh, yeah, had, had a great had run there. there. Uh, uh, Technicolor ran into some, some trouble. During the same, During time, the same time, 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 yeah, I'd gotten, I had married, gotten married, had children, had children and, my and my wife got a awesome job awesome down, down in San Diego. San Diego. So again, so again I, left I left primarily because of personal reasons. Start, went to so a startup started, in Orange County, County, thought that would be closer, uh, closer to, San to San Diego, and somehow, and somehow I'd forgotten forgot that the hours at a startup are much are worse than the hours at any other place. Other place. So, despite, so the despite, despite the fact that I was closer to San, to San Diego, Diego um, uh, I, was I was working way, way more hours and saw my wife and son even less than I did when I was living in LA and they were living in San Diego. Eventually, Eventually, that, that situation, situation got untenable, got untenable and, and I had been I had consistently, consistently networking, networking um, and um, applying, applying for jobs in San Diego. San Diego. There, wasn't there wasn't nearly the, the number, number of jobs, jobs in San Diego as there would have been in the Bay Area or Los Angeles. Los Angeles. So that's when so I decided to strike out on my own. Um, um, 
I left that, that startup, in, startup Orange County, in Orange County, started networking, started networking um, inside, um, San, inside Diego San Diego as an agile specialist, specialist because, because I've been, been doing, doing it for doing about, it for 10, about years, 10 years, which is which way longer than, than anyone else. Anyone else. Uh, uh, I had, I had uh, a resume and, and I had the experience to talk to pretty much any situation that I ran into. So as I was networking, as I was cultivating clients, they'd ask me, hey, have you ever run into that problem? Yes, I've run into that problem five times. This is how we solved it. Um, um, and it took and me it took about me six months six really months to really build up to a build funnel, funnel um, um, of customers, customers and, and regular, and regular work. work. It, it, was it, it was an interesting, interesting transition, transition because, because I'd, I'd, you know, for the most know, part, been used to showing up, showing up, collecting the check, 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 you know, yeah, medical, benefits medical benefits and all that, and all that versus, versus really, really having to go having out and, out, you know, yeah, hustle, hustle all the time. All the time. I, was I was in that in time that period time when I was building up the business, up the business I, was I was probably attending somewhere, somewhere between 10, 10 and 14, 14 coffees, coffees cocktails, cocktails, lunches, lunches breakfast, breakfast, breakfast every week. Every week. I, mean, I mean, just you have to work the customer base, you have to work the network. Um, was on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn all the time. All the time. I, would I would basically meet with anyone, anyone who would meet with me. With me. And eventually, and eventually customers, customers started, started shaking loose. Shaking loose. Uh, uh, the, interesting the interesting thing for me is, is so, so my so largest my client is 24 Hour Fitness, fitness. Um, uh, and, I and, and I had them, and I had a bunch of other bunch clients other that I was working with, working but 24 Hour Fitness, fitness is basically taking over all of my time right now. So the challenge that I have is I am collecting, you know, you know, uh, essentially, essentially a regular, a regular paycheck, paycheck even, though even though it's my business, it's my business but, but I have no I time have to no network time now. now. Uh, 24 uh, hour fitness takes, takes anywhere, anywhere between 40, 40 and 60 40 hours a week, hours a week minimum. minimum. Uh, uh, and, and my and role my has role grown there. So whereas so I started out as an, as an agile, agile coach, coach and helped them get their engineering, engineering process in place and made and great made strides, strides. Uh, uh, they, recognized they recognized the fact that I had much more diverse experience. And based and on based that diverse on experience, experience, I now I essentially run their run digital, their digital, uh, uh, digital strategy, digital strategy uh, uh, getting, getting their loyalty program, program up, up, delivering their delivering brand new, new uh, uh, mobile app that will be coming out later this year, this year doing, doing virtual, virtual group exercise classes. classes. I have a whole I have list of digital, digital initiatives, initiatives that I'm driving I'm for driving them. For them. Um, um, Ostensibly, it's still, still in the Agile world, world because we're using we're Agile using principles agile to principles deliver all these projects, projects but it's but very it's different very from, from you know, what, I, what I initially started, started doing for them. For them. Um, um, so, so that's kind of my history, kind of history. Um, um, you know, yeah, a verbal a resume. resume. You know, some you of know, the some lessons, of the I, lessons think I think I learned that, that I'd want to pass on, on, whether you're whether going for a big company, big company or whether you're, or whether you're you know, working you know, for yourself, yourself is, is one, one focus. focus. You, you and I, I touched yeah, on, I that touched on that before. before. The, people the people who I've met who are most successful, successful across, across pretty much any industry, industry are the people who really know exactly where they want to go and have a depth of knowledge or expertise in what it is that they do do. Um, um, so, so I'd recommend, I'd recommend if you're good at something, if you have a passion about, about something, something, dig in, dig in really, understand really, really understand it, understand become the expert, because, because as you become as the, you expert the expert and you interact and you, interact and you network, and you with, network other people, with other people, they recognize that you're an expert and you have inherent value and they come to the assumption, well, if they're really good at that, they can pick up other tasks as well. this is essentially what's happened in my career multiple times. You know, you know, it's semantic. It's semantic. Started, started out as, as, you know, as like a QA, QA supervisor, supervisor manager. manager. All of a sudden, I have all of QA, QA and I'm driving brand, brand new products. Uh, a Technicolor. Uh, I started there I again, a QA, QA director. All of a sudden, I own all of development, all of QA, all of product. And it was because I could speak. I knew what I knew and was able to accomplish things as soon as I hit the ground. And because and of that, because I got, of that, I got new, opportunities. new opportunities. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, similarly, in the consultant, the consultant world, world, you know, you know most of my most friends of my are now consultants, consultants in one aspect one or another. another. It's the guys, it's the guys and girls, and girls uh, who, know uh, who know what they're what talking, they're talking about, about and who and can basically, can basically create, create a narrative uh, uh, and, a and a connection that really are the most successful people. The people, again, who have that focus. The second thing that I think is extraordinarily important is to be is deliberate. Be deliberate. Um, um, not only have the focus of what you're knowing, but decide what it is that you want to do. Um, um, and, and 
make the decisions, make the decisions to, get to, to get to that end. end. If you don't if know you what don't your know goal is, goal it's is hard to hard achieve it. Achieve it. Um, so, um, so decide, decide what your goal is and drive, drive towards that with, that with a reckless, reckless abandon. abandon. Do, do everything you everything can do to get to that goal. Work the hours, get the skills, extend the network, and put all your energy behind that. If you're trying to do two things or three things at the same time, it's not as easy to be successful as if you really decide what it is and, and um, um, pursue, that. pursue that. So I think that's, so my, that's my, my initial, initial spiel. spiel. Um, um, I, can I can go ahead and, go ahead and, uh, and uh, launch, into, launch the into the questions that you guys have you guys sent in. in. Um, uh, but I really would I like really this to be like very conversational. conversational. So, so yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer, answer a question, question but, please but please jump in. Jump in. Um, um, we can do we can a follow-up. Um, but um, I want you guys to get the most value out of this conversation. this conversation. And Jeremy, Jeremy you know, if yeah, it makes sense, sense, please go ahead and translate, translate as well. As well. Um, um, you know, you know, as things as come. Things yes. Come. Yes. So um, you mentioned earlier that uh, 24 Hour Fitness basically is your your sole client at the moment. Uh, as a small business owner, right? Doesn't that concern you that that all of your all of your income, all of your revenue? business comes from one basically one horse and and that eventually that could go away or will go away so, so uh, uh, no kidding uh, aside i woke up at four o'clock this, this morning worried about, worried about that, that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, oh my god, oh my god. what am i going to do, do? The, the, the 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 particulars of this situation, situation is, is i'm delivering, I'm delivering a lot of value, value for them, for them. Um, um, yeah, i'm yeah, negotiating I'm a, couple a couple of deals for them that are in the tens of millions of dollars but as of july 31st when i deliver on all those things i don't know that they need me anymore um, um, so, so in this past, in this week, past week, I started reaching out to my contacts, to my contacts again. I started networking. networking. Um, um, yeah, yeah, and, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see, see if this was a tactical, this a tactical mistake, mistake on my behalf. Yeah, I, I love, I, I love what I'm doing for 24 Hour Fitness. I'm having a great time. I'm getting all sorts of positive feedback. But I think you're right. There is a huge risk right now. Other questions, like. Before Garrett jumps into what uh, what's already on the list, I I'll I'll jump in with what it's not really a question, but an important point of clarification on your like personal background. Before I forget, and we get to the end of the the time, um, very very important thing about Garrett is that he was my freshman year roommate at Stanford. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, it, over the course of asking questions, if you want to ask Garrett what it was like, for example, to try and understand the way I talked when I first got to uh, California from uh, from Indiana, and, and interesting stories like that. When I was, let's see, you were already eighteen; I was seventeen when I got there. So, what I was like at that age, then that is also that is also available for for conversational fun in this in this uh, this this talk. Gee, why don't you go into the first one that uh, that Ray had about uh, having a patent? You have the list in front of you of questions. So what you really so what guys you really need to find though is pictures, pictures of his magnificent, magnificent mullet, mullet, mullet from 1989. It was a great mullet. That was that was obligatory to have a mullet if you played soccer in the 80s. In the Midwest. In the Midwest. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first question is from uh, Alonzo asking about uh, the patent that I have. Um, it, it really does help. It gives me a lot of technical cred that I otherwise wouldn't have. I'm not a technical person. Um, but the patent that we do have is highly technical. Uh, the lead scientist who actually put together the algorithm that we have the patent for is an absolute genius. Um, he has, he is in some ways some kind of the godfather of all technologies for storing data, uh, video and audio data, shrinking them and then expanding them so that you can consume them on your laptops and tablets and phones. Uh, 
I think the, the most, most important, important part of, of the kind of the, the patent story is, story is the reason the that reason I was put on the patent is because, is because I had the vision to let this guy run. Guy run. Um, um, you know, I, I would say that my primary, primary skill set really is management and, and uh, developing, developing people, people um, and letting and people be successful. So in this case, you know, I had a highly, highly technical team, all masters or PhD level people in development, and as much as I I wanted to get wanted particular, to particular projects, projects out the door. The door. This, guy this guy had no had business no doing day-to-day -day 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 development. Day -day 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 -development. Um, uh, he was a researcher. Was a researcher. I, let I let him go down the research, down the research track. track. He had a number had of other patents. patents. Uh, when, uh, I when I left Technicolor, I think going on going four on years ago years now, ago now uh, uh, they were pulling, they were pulling in, in in excess of four hundred million dollars um, uh, in licensing fees off, off, off their technologies, um, and letting um, people, and people like like Lee Wah go ahead and develop, and develop technologies, technologies like that like really is kind of set. Kind of set. Um, um, the, the, the precedence, the precedence of, pulling of pulling revenue long term, long -term against, against your your you know your efforts to do research. Uh, uh, does that make does sense? That make sense? Did, did you have a follow-up follow question or want more, more clarity? Ray, what do you yeah. think about the answer yeah, there? Um, so I, I like the idea of having a patent because on your resume it shows that you can be technical and creative and that you're capable of producing on your own. So with any industry you jump into, I think that'd be great to have on any resume. Um, so after you had your, your guys' idea put together, how long of a time frame was there between submitting the patent and uh, getting it approved and finalized? And what were your, if you don't mind me asking, total costs of getting the patent? So Jeremy, can so you Jeremy, translate? Can you translate? Yeah. So Ray, Ray actually is thinking about trying to get a patent on an idea he has right now. So the question is directly relevant to to his future as well. But his his question was. Um, you know, basically, how long did it take you to get the patent application approved, and how much did it cost ballpark for the the whole process? Got it. Got it. So in so this in case, case patent, the patent actually, patent actually, belongs, actually belongs, belongs to Technicolor. To technicolor. Um, um, I'd say it's, I'd a, say it's a, a it's been a it's three, been three year, year ongoing, ongoing process. process. Um, the cost um, of it is excess of fifty thousand dollars. I worked with three different three lawyers. Different continued lawyers, to work with the lawyers. Um, um, I probably get a call, even though I'm even though long left Technicolor, technicolor so I probably talk to them every talk six months. They'll give me a call for a clarification, or we'll do a group call with me and the other two patent holders to talk about the technology and its implementation. Does that answer your question, Ray? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Gee, I'll I'll ask a follow up question there. Like, you know, we we started on that project for for you in two classes ago or three classes ago now. Um, and you know, I, I really, I really believe strongly that, uh, you know, if a, a lot of the costs that end up coming up for a patent application are, 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 are the legwork necessary to go and do all your due diligence. And that can actually, that doesn't have to be done by a $200 an hour lawyer. Um, do you want to contradict me on that? No, I, yeah, I would say you're correct. You're correct. Um, um, it's also, it's also relative, relative to the stakes, to the stakes right? right? So, so if you're fresh if you're out of college, fresh college um, um, and you're and driving you're a Toyota Corolla, Corolla and you don't, and have, you any don't have any assets, assets then you don't, then need, you don't need a million need dollars, dollars of coverage, coverage for insurance. For insurance. If you own a house and you have two kids in college and you're driving a Jaguar, you need a million dollars in coverage. So in this case, with the patent, we needed three high-powered lawyers. Um, the end result for technical may be tens of millions of dollars. One of the other patents that Liwa owns uh, or the technology he came up with was worth hundreds of millions of dollars to Microsoft. Um, so. The fact, the fact is, depending, depending on, on what you think what your exposure, you think exposure is relative, relative to that patent, to that patent um, um, you have to go you ahead and invest, invest more, more or less money. Less money. Does, that make sense? does that make sense? Uh, it does to me, Ray. Does that make sense to you? It does. Perfect. Cool. Gee, right. how about, how about right. Khaled's question, man? So, Khaled, so, Khaled uh, uh, how were you able to manage, manage highly, technical highly technical personnel, personnel knowing, knowing they, they, they didn't come from a technical background? I know so, you like this so, question, man. You, you, you talk with me about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so there, is there is value in being, being a good, good manager, manager. Um, um, and, and being, being able, being to, able impart to impart confidence, confidence in confidence people, that people that work for you. For you. Um, um, part of my part management, management philosophy, philosophy has always has been, always been hey, hey, do what you, you do, do, and I will do what I do. In Symantec in particular, what I would tell the guys was, hey, Hey, I'll, I'll take, take care of take all, care the bullshit, all the bullshit, all the politics. All the politics. I, will I will shield you from that, you from but that, I need you to drive, to drive the projects the home. Projects home. Um, um, and, and coming to the, coming to the realization that they weren't going to have to deal with deal the politics or worry so about worry anything about else other than, other than getting the technology, the technology done, done. Um, um, the technologists tend to gravitate, to gravitate towards, towards me and appreciate that. The other thing, I have... No problem no asking problem questions. questions. So I'd always so say, I'd always hey, say, hey you know, you know, pretend, know, pretend I, know I know nothing. Walk me through Walk what this actually means. And, and then I would, then I would, I would invest, the invest the time as well, as well to, try to, to try to understand what it is, what it the is, problems the that problems they were uh, uh, running into, uh, running into as, well as well as the actual technology. technology. Because I showed an interest, interest, uh, uh, and because I really kind of dug in and would be able would be able to get my mind wrapped around the projects, again I I garnered a lot of support support, uh, uh, and and acceptance from the technical people. people. Uh, further, uh, further, I would say, I would say as a as second line second manager, line manager uh, uh, I was even I was more even successful. More so, so as a first line first manager in a technical group, group, it's really it's hard really because hard. sometimes yeah, they sometimes do come to you for technical, technical mentorship, mentorship, which I couldn't which provide. I couldn't provide. As, a as a second line manager, manager having, having people, people who are technical, technical underneath me, who were able to answer the day-to-day questions and make tactical trade-offs, it made it a lot easier. That way I could provide vision, I could provide support, I could provide answers, and the end result was, you know, by and large, by and large a, lot a lot of success. Lot of success. Uh, you know, uh, you I got an award, award, award when I was in Technicolor, which meant which a lot, lot to me because, because you know, this executive you know, vice president got, got up in front of a few thousand people and said, you know, Garrett, you know, Garrett you're, you're the only, only technical manager, manager that I've ever that had who ever actually had delivered on time and under budget. Well, I chuckled to myself and I think people working for me chuckled because they know I'm not technical. However, because I because created an atmosphere, created an atmosphere and an environment, environment that allowed, that allowed people, to people to do the jobs do the that they were job passionate about, about, we did we come did in come under budget, under budget um, and, and on time and with an with awesome full awesome feature set, feature set that, that at the time was the envy of most, most of the post-production most houses, houses um, um, in Hollywood. In Hollywood. Khaled, what do you think of the answer? Well, thanks for the uh, inspiring uh, answer. So we'll put it like that and then uh, for the... I mean, I'm doing my I'm MBA and I was working the oil field and I'm doing much in my MBA just to branch out from for different fields. And I will always every time I apply for jobs, but I'm not MBA, I'm not uh, like in the oil field. Uh, for example, I'm applying for a finance positions uh, because of my MBA. So I, I'm afraid that people will see my background will not gonna consider me because I don't have any uh, basically financial background. Just an example, or management. Also, management for this position. So that's why I ask you how you were you able to be from not technical and to branch out with the, to, to another uh, specialty, and you were able to, uh, to do a great job in that. Is that did you get the question, Eric? I, I really didn't. I really didn't. That's okay. I can I can like translate for you again, uh, or at least like amplify more than translate. Um, so, um, Haled, I think Haled is kind of asking you. Uh, the reverse of your own situation. He he has a, a, a more of a of an engineering and technical bra- background in in, in uh, uh, oil fields, and he's interested in branching out, maybe getting into finance, other areas of uh, of of uh, other areas of either the oil business or a different industry. But he comes from a kind of technical side of of, of oil oil fields, so. Got it. Can, can Got you it. switch your own experience to the other direction and how he would um, not be just seen as an oil field technical dude? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, so you're, you're a, a, highly, a valuable highly valuable commodity. commodity. Um, the, more um, the more technical expertise, expertise you have, you have uh, moving um, into, into the other areas, the other areas people, people will want to snatch you up fairly quickly. Fairly quickly. Um, 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 
I assume that you're one of the folks getting your MBA. Um, I I don't know know what types of focus 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 are available in the MBA. MBA. If you want to go finance, finance, you got to do the finance finance aspects of the MBA. MBA. Um, I actually tried to break into finance finance, uh, when I was um, looking for jobs in San Diego. Again, I was trying to do second line manager. I had a whole bunch of business knowledge. I can read I financial, can read financial sheets, sheets, no problem, and no working problem, with them in and out, in and out for, years. for years. But without yeah, the without degree, degree, people are like, Gary, smart, smart, smart guy, we like you. Like but yeah, you're not yeah, going to break out and break into finance without the degree. Great. So, so uh, I, think um, I think once you have the MBA, the MBA um, um, you know, if you know, finance is really your passion, maybe go add a master's in finance as well on top of it. You'll be able to break in, no problem. Hold on, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. G, uh, it's 20 till basically. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mike is a little bit late because he doesn't know exactly where he's going. But uh, you might want to jump around alphabetically so that we don't pa- penalize like uh, Fear Zachariah and uh, Valerie Yonan just because their names happen to start with the end of the alphabet. Uh, uh, excellent. Excellent. So why don't I do that? So I'll, do that. I'll, I'll go back, I'll and, go forth. back and forth. Cool. So... so... Zachariah, Zachariah would be the bottom one. Be. How do you yeah, fear continuous, continuous improvement among your among subordinates and, and, and at the same time the same provide time awareness, awareness to the company, to the company at, 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 large, at, at large, I guess? So, so uh, again, uh, deliberate. Again, deliberate. So, I'm all about so I'm continuous, all about improvement, continuous in general. improvement in general. The tool, the tool that we tool use for Agile and for Scrum in particular is the retrospective. So, after every sprint, um, you go ahead and do a, a retrospective and you publish those uh, findings um, to, to wider company um, to get an understanding. Uh, typically, in my retrospectives, I have multiple different, I have everyone in the world represented there, get all their feedback, um, identify. As many as so five as different five things different that need to improve in any given in retrospective. retrospective. And then I and force then I the group at hand to identify, to identify one. one. Hey, what, hey, what are we going to fix in the next two weeks? Next two weeks? What this will do for your uh, process is it will slow it down initially because you'll be spending, you'll be sending part of your capacity improving the process um, or addressing problems rather than actually delivering, um, in my case, code or whatever engineering um, to the role you may have. But over time, so over three months or six months, all of a sudden your team is the superstar team. In particular, 24 Hour Fitness, I basically took over the bad news bears of the organization. Um, it was it's a team down in Mexico. Um, that um, team is now the number one, one development team in the entire company. The entire company. Um, they are um, overloaded, overloaded with work because, work because people across the company across say, the company hey, say, hey, they delivered this, they delivered, this, this, they delivered that. We want that. those we want folks those working folks on our working on projects. projects. Previously, Previously, they've been, they've been the maintenance the team, maintenance you know, team. <laughs> low profile, <laughs> low glory low type things, but now because they're able to continuously improve, it made all the difference in the world. Uh, fear, uh, I, what? Sorry, good. Gee, were you not done? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Fear, how is how's that for an answer? Do you have a follow up? Uh, it's cool. Um, because uh, throughout my career, I've been dealing with a lot of uh, improvement. So um, I just want to get feedback on you on how you drive your team um, to have the same same mindset. Because oftentimes that's the difficult thing to do. Where uh, to channel those uh, mindset to your uh, subordinate, to your um, down employees. Did you get that? I didn't. I didn't. That's okay. I can amplify. Fear basically said, uh, uh, how how do you get the rest of the folks under you, and then not the folks under you, but the broader organization to to take continuous improvement as seriously as you do, or to, to, to internalize it so they don't just sort of uh, mail it in. Got it. 
Got it. So, so that's, like that's like an hour and a half, an lecture, hour and a half lecture all into itself. itself. Um, let me give you, um, just, let me a give you just a couple of bullet, bullet points. points. One, you need buy-in from buy director or above. Or above. Um, you um, got to find someone. You got to convince them from the importance of continuous improvement. You got to get their weight behind it. Some tactics that I've used is one: bring in an expert. So either find someone in the company, you know, at a VP level or or higher who also believes in continuous improvement, improvement. you find that you find person that by person continuing, continuing networking, networking, and then you bring, and them, you bring in. So them in. So when an expert, when an expert comes from outside, from outside and, talks and talks to it and to its, it value, its value, more people more will fall, people in mind. fall in mind. The other thing you do yeah, is, and I use this I tool use this all the time, all I, the time I, I, I highly recommend it for all of you in any industry and any business venture, have a narrative. Be able to tell a story. So find some story, preferably in your past, where continuous improvement has come up with a positive result for an organization. Refine that narrative. Make it exciting. When you tell that story, it sticks with people. What you'll find is once you've told that story, three months later you'll be in a meeting and someone will say, hey, Zachariah told Zachariah me that told he did this one time. This it one was time. amazing it was what, they amazing what they achieved because they, because they, they recall it. Recall All of a sudden, you start building momentum. Start building momentum. So that, that, that would so be that, my that two would recommendations. Be recommendations. Gee, um, keep going. I just wanted to let you know quickly, Mike is actually early rather than late. I got to go pick him up in the parking lot so he knows what room to come to. Um, I know Tom had was raising his hand a second ago with a, a question, and I wanted to make sure that you get to Emma Rubalcava's question about being a scrum master uh and then i think tawana actually had a question about scrum as well okay so okay uh on the point i'll be right back i just got to go out in the parking lot and get our next speaker did i tell you about the next speaker man you did not you did not it's a cool company they they, they restore and maintain vintage world war ii aircraft awesome awesome yeah i'll be right back all right all right so right. um if agile is so powerful and and providing results, um, why don't we see it in, in more instances? Why isn't it more uh, uh, widely used? And then how would you go implement it in a place that really is, is stuck in a rut? So, so it's, a it's a great question. Um, um, and there's a number of components. Number of components. Now, in, you know, software in software in general, in it's, general really it's really permeated every place. place. Um, somewhat um, to my annoyance, because there's actually because a number of companies, actually number of companies which offer agile, agile consulting now. Um, um, and they have very they have junior, junior people who junior just have some certifications, some certifications that haven't actually worked in the industry. Um, and the concern and is, the concern if is you have junior, have people, junior people out there, out they're, there actually they're actually going to undercut the value of agile, agile in general. In general. Um, um, as for as places for that places are in a rut, people, places, people, places that are Six places Sigma are or PMP oriented, PMP oriented, it's really it's hard really to break hard that up and get in there and explain the value. The hope right now, so for PMP, PMP has actually started offering an agile certification inside PMP. And so I think and over, so I think time, over time, time, Agile will Agile permeate, will permeate other, places. other places. Um, um, again, it really comes, again, it really comes back to an internal, internal, internal evangelist, evangelist, someone who says, someone who says hey guys, hey guys, um, We've been working on this uh, in this uh, other project, and 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 we have amazing results, results. and this is what has allowed us to do. do. Um, Typically, typically, if you're the one who's trying to get a foothold in an organization with Agile, you you basically go to someone and say, I know we don't do this, let's do it for one project. One small project, one small and let's see what the results, see what the results are. are. And you get a cross section of folks to go ahead and work on that. And, work on that. Um, um, and, and so once you expose so once them, you expose it, them it, really it really does, um, really does um, spread fairly spread quickly. Fairly like quickly. every organization like every I've been where I introduced Agile when I was at Technical, they had never done it before. Within a year, pretty much every group was using it. So that would be my initial feedback. Um, um, kind of jumping around, kind of a, jumping little around bit. a little you know, bit. The next question, yeah, I have next question I have from Valerie from was, Valerie was you know, you know, do you think going to Stanford, going to Stanford essentially, benefited essentially benefited your career? Benefited your the, career. Answer yes. the answer is I yes. I never would have gotten into Apple had I not gone to Stanford. Um, um, I showed up, showed up. I 
I knew um, enough I to be dangerous technically, and I was able to get through the phone interview. Um, I showed up on um, my interview day. I was going to interview with the same manager, but she was sick, so I had to interview with her boss, who was very technical, very bright. Um, she asked me about asked five me questions, about five which I questions clearly could not clearly answer. Could not answer. And, we were and we were at opposite ends, ends of the banquet table. table. So we're probably 16, so 20, 16 feet 20 feet apart. And she eventually, and she pulled, eventually down pulled down her glasses and said, and said you don't know anything, don't do, know you? anything do you? <laughs> huh, how am I supposed <laughs> to answer that? You just stared at me. I see you went to Stanford. That means you're really, really smart, doesn't it? No. My answer was, well, I was very lucky to have the opportunity to go to such a prestigious, or, and she cuts me off. She's like, you went to Stanford. That means you're smart. Tell you what, I'm going to hire you. You have two weeks to prove yourself. If you don't prove yourself, I'm going to fire you. Okay? Okay. So, long story short, yes. Yes. Stanford has helped me in multiple, multiple uh, situations. Uh, situations. Throw the name out there, and I get instant credibility. With that said, with that said I, would I would say the more valuable the thing more valuable is accomplishment. Is if you're on the dean's you're list the dean's from any school from in the world, in the world um, um, yeah. If you've yeah. made the connections and the support and from support the faculty and staff of your, your institution, I say that is say just that is as valuable. Just as valuable. Um, because, um, because the other part of it, other is, part of it is people gravitate, people towards, gravitate their towards their own. So if you're in so an area, in an area you know, where it's you know, all people from UCLA people or from industry that's all UCLA, they're going to hire another UCLA person. My stepdaughter went to Wesleyan. Which um, is the northeastern school, North school, but they have a huge, have a huge presence, presence in Hollywood. In They're gigantic, Hollywood. In, gigantic Hollywood. in Hollywood. Um, um, if you want to get into Hollywood, you want to backdoor it. USC, USC, one school, one school, the other school is Wesleyan. No one's really ever heard, heard of Wesleyan. Um, um, but I would say, if you have that mission and you know where you want to go, make that extra effort to pick the school or certification which makes the most sense for your situation. And that will help you more than anything else. Let's see. Valerie, does that, I think that was your question, right? Any follow up you want to ask? No, I went to UCLA, so I feel like the biggest thing is the name. Like what I learned there, I don't know. Most of the most of the things I learned in class didn't really like apply, but yeah, it is like the name and the challenge, I guess. <laughs> that taught me. I I have found the same thing, by the way, Valerie. I. Uh, you went there twice. Um. Well, I mean, no, I, yes, but actually, I got more tech. I got more practical value out of the MBA at UCLA than I did my undergrad at Stanford. I was a German history major, but really, really my major was like intellectually fascinating, but practically useless classless. That's what the, that's what the degree should have said. I, I took, I took a, a class on Zen Buddhism. I took two different class. I, I took a class on the gospel of Mark from like a historiological perspective. Um, they were fascinating classes. Um, you know, the brand name, the brand name opens a lot of doors. So nobody really cares <laughs> whether I had any like technical skills whatsoever. They, they see the name and it, it opens doors. So um, as, as, a, as an educator now, I actually like, I, I just yesterday was having like, yesterday, no, Thursday, was having a very like heated discussion with some of my colleagues about my philosophy towards teaching because um, if you guys cannot put an accomplishment that has like dollar value or percentage improvement or something on it out of this class, I don't feel like I've given you value. You know, uh, I, I don't want to like I don't want to talk about like high like sort of philosophical to cop to topics and ideas. I want to give you concrete value that makes you more valuable as a professional when you leave this room than when you came in. Um, and part of that is because I feel like I got a, a primo education and I have no, I, I had, I had no employable skills uh, coming out of that. So I get my colleagues point as well. There's, there's two different viewpoints and I'm probably too practical at times and not enough like esoteric, but, um, my, my two cents worth on your question as well. Gee, sorry to interrupt you, man. So I, I'd follow so up, I, on I'd that, follow up on that, Jeremy. Um, um, I think I that think you probably, the you probably most the value, most and you're probably value already doing this, that doing your students can get out of this class, out of this class is, is if you take five, five or ten five minutes at the end of each class, class, maybe even fifteen, 15 and say, hey, and what say, worked hey, well and what didn't, what else would you like to see? You know, back to the conversation about continuous improvement. 
Um, in this case, in this you know, case all the know, students all here, the students you guys here, are the consumers. Guys are the consumers. Uh, Jeremy is the one Jeremy selling you a product. product. you got to give them feedback so you can give them a better product. Better product. Uh, and I think that's uh, really, really worth your really time. Worth your time. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Continuous improvement Continuous in education. Improvement in education. Uh, uh, I uh, agree, G. I actually do that as part of the class, but I only do it like once, halfway through. Um, I, I think I'm going to start doing it after every class. Thank you for that suggestion. Well, okay, so that brings up another question. How do you get people to give you feedback if they don't want to give it to you because they, they think it's negative and, they, and they're, they, they don't want to hurt your feelings, they don't want to, uh, maybe they don't want to seem stupid because they didn't understand everything. Um, so how do, you, how, do you get, how do you pull the feedback out of those people? Got it. So, Tom, are you uh, saying so that you have something that's going to hurt my feelings that you want to tell I've me about my class? I've already told all the things that are going to hurt your feelings. It's the rest of the class that doesn't. So this really goes well, go back ahead. to the tool. Yeah. You may hurt my feelings, but I'll get over it. Sorry, do you go ahead and answer the question? Um, Jeremy is fairly Jeremy fragile, is fairly but, fragile no. but no. <laughs> I'm resilient, though. I bruise easily, but I heal quickly. So this comes back to, so this comes to back my to tools of retrospective, tool retrospective. Um, and two of um, the things the about the retrospective. the retrospective. One, it has to be a one, safe place. So, so you have to agree as a group, hey, we're going to get feedback. Get it's feedback. going to be very blunt very feedback, blunt. but it's not meant to hurt it's anyone's feelings to hurt or to accuse anyone. It's, hey, let's get all the facts out there and resolve them. It's all about communication. If you go online um, if you go and online, look up retrospective, you'll find a whole bunch of different formats different to get formats, people involved. Get people involved. Um, the one um, that is the, the easiest to remember, easiest to remember uh, is a quadrant um, one. A so basically, one, so basically you, put a cross, you put a cross, and in each of the four quadrants, you have a different subject. One is what went one well, what went another well, one is another what one didn't is, go well. Shout outs is Shout another outs one like, hey, you did, like, awesome. hey, you did and awesome. And the third one is new ideas. new ideas. And everyone, and is, required everyone is required to, to put in comment in one of the quadrants. You, you go through and you talk to them. That kind of forces that participation. Kind of forces participation. And, and as other and people as are talking people about, are talking you know, about you know, you know, their comment, you know, their comment you know, it, it builds you know, upon itself. People start jumping in. So that would be my recommendation to elicit feedback. Got it. I think I might employ it next week, my final class session. Better late than never. So, so I'm down to two minutes to before, two the minutes before the turnover. Um, was yeah. there one more was in particular more you wanted me to answer, answer, Jeremy? To answer Jeremy? Um, I actually don't have the questions in front of me right now because I handed my handed my laptop over to Mike so he could see his questions. So uh, let me turn that over to the class instead. Who who wants to? Like, what has Garrett not addressed that uh, that you still like him to address from your questions? I have a question. Tawana, please, go ahead. So earlier in the discussion, you mentioned that um, since you were overburdened financially um, at Stanford, you chose not to go for your graduate degree. Um, I've actually run into a few people a few of my colleagues that went to UC Berkeley or somewhere, and um, they were just overburdened with the loans and such. How so? Is it in that sense? Is it better to just go to a state school and be able to afford to enhance your education later on, or to get your undergraduate out of Stanford or UC Berkeley and stuff? Did you hear the question, G? I did not. I did not. That's okay. I can. I you know the we. There's limits to our technology. I can hear. I can hear uh, Tawana's question more better than it comes through on the spike of the the mic there for you. So, her question was basically the trade-offs of uh, investing a significant amount of money into a degree from Stanford or Berkeley or something else like that versus going to a state school having less debt. Uh, but not having the same brand brand name. Uh, she, Tawana was asking what what you think about the, the 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 pros and cons of each of those two different paths. Got it. Got it. It really does it depend really on circumstance. Really circumstance, I would say. Um, 
Uh, yeah, there's a yeah, lot of knowledge out there. Knowledge if, you're out poor, there. if you're poor, it's actually cheaper to, go, actually to, cheaper to go, go to Harvard than to go to a state, than to go to state school. Um, um, I think uh, Harvard, Princeton, Princeton Stanford. Stanford. And if your family makes, if your family makes less than sixty thousand dollars a year, you go for free. If they make less than a hundred thousand dollars, tuition is free, but you have to pick up the books and board. Um, so, I, I think so you need to be, think, again, deliberate. Be, again, deliberate. Um, if you've taken, um, if you've taken you know, microeconomics, you know, microeconomics uh, which is uh, a fantastic class, if you haven't taken it, you need to take it to help manage your life and career. Life it's, and all career. it's all about the utility. It's all about right? the utility. What utility right? am I going to get for my investment? I would say in general, I would say know, in general we take a deeper conversation about your particular, particular situation. If you, if you know, have a specific you know, skill set, say in sales, sales, or you have a sales, business idea, idea that you want to drive, if you need the, if you need the tactical or the technical, technical knowledge technical you're getting knowledge from your degree from to go degree, out and go out and drive, drive that small drive business owner, there's you know, uh, there's great, you know, great arguments to be made that state made school is the way, go, the way to go because you have less debt, debt you have all debt, you have, um, um, the knowledge you need to be successful. You need to be successful. Uh, a, uh, a classmate of Jeremy, of Jeremy and, and I, and I and named Holly Delane, named Holly Delane. Um, um, she went uh, all the way through Stanford, all the way through Stanford um, and then decided she was going to become a jeweler. Moved to LA, got a small apartment in Santa Monica, got her. Gemological uh, certification, certification and just started playing around making jewelry. Around making jewelry. Um, um, you know, did she need to go to Stanford to do that? She sure did it. She's been doing it for over um, 20 years. Over she makes fantastic she jewelry. Fantastic she has some very high end clients. But again, um, her, the genesis of her success was not her Stanford education, it was her passion for jewelry and her willingness to make the trade outs. Instead of you know, Instead, wanting to live on the you know, beach, live on uh, beach go work for an investment uh, bank for an investment and go out for cocktails, go out for cocktails all the time. All the time. Uh, she wanted to move uh, into a small apartment, into a small apartment and dive into her work and really her understand work, everything really there understand was to understand about jewelry, jewelry and marketing jewelry, jewelry, and jewelry and building a clientele and, and, and clientele the actual and technical aspects of holding precious metals and understanding different grades of gems and going to gem shops. So... So I, I don't know that I answered your question, I answered um, your question. but um, it comes yeah. back again to it being delivered, and understanding deliver, what it is you want to achieve, you want to and achieve. then making the trade-offs yeah, that you trade need to make to, um, make to get to that um, end. To get to that end. Tawana, does that answer your question a bit? Yes, thank you. Cool. Gee, we could. I, mean, I, I would love if I had the, the ability to expand space time and dilate it. Um, but I suppose if I had that ability, um, I would, I would probably be elsewhere than here teaching this class right now because that that ability would be in great demand. Um, I I got I want to make sure to be uh, sensitive to Mike's time as well. He I think he's got about an hour. Or so um, right. if if students have more like questions that they didn't get to have answered, can I? Like, have you send an answer on email or something later? Yeah, on? that'd be great. Please yeah, feel free to reach out. Please to feel me. free to reach out to me. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. Let's give Garrett a big round of applause. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great class and good luck in all your future endeavors. Thanks, G. It's great to see you again, man. Thanks for doing this. Good to see this. you, too. Good to see you, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. <sighs> I agree. He's my friend. I have good taste. Interesting to... Uh, to find out where to learn more about agile development outside of IT, like how to implement that in a, in a, in a business. Uh-huh. You would like to know that? Yeah. Uh, I would like to know that too. Let me. Sure.